Hey everyone, this is Dennis Chang. Welcome to another video. Here I am in Germany in isolation mode. We were supposed to record an album yesterday, but one of the musicians tested positive, so plans are cancelled for now until further notice, but it's okay. So far I'm feeling well. Um, and even if I get the virus, as long as it's not too severe, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm really happy to be here. If you watched my last video, it was quite difficult, me, difficult for me in the past year. And just being here has kind of healed my mental health. I want to thank everyone for supporting you know, DC Music School and buying my SoundSlice courses. And um, yeah, the whole site is on discount, so if you want to support me some more, <laughs> please feel free to do so. The link is in the description box. It's also a very difficult time for a lot of musicians and I've, uh, even though I'm not rich, I'm very lucky as a musician to be able to, start, to earn passive income and I've helped a few musicians out here and there. So when you support me, you support other musicians as well. And I thank you very much for this. Um, yeah, we were supposed to record an album with Vava Adler. Uh, it's a very big honor to be, invite, to be invited to play rhythm guitar for him alongside the legendary Hono Winterstein and man it was a lot of fun so this video that you just watched is from a rehearsal and just a video that we did for fun unfortunately we weren't able to do anything in the studio due to the uh, 
positive test result for one of the musicians. But we'll try to do the album sometime in January. In this video, um, I don't have anything planned, but I want to talk to you about Harmony. Because this past few weeks, you know, rehearsing with Vava, Hono, recording the Hoki Gresse, it's just, I mean, things I already knew, but it just reminded me about the importance of immersing yourself in a language, in a musical language. Because these guys don't know any theory whatsoever, like barely. Um, <laughs> When I tell Hoki I said D minor, he was like, is this D minor? It's like, no, go three frets higher. Is this D minor? Yeah, that's D minor. But then, um, on the drive from Paris to The Hague in the Netherlands, he was telling me he was listening to this standard, but beautiful. He had never played it, but he had heard it many times, and he, he loved it so much that even though he had never played it, he started playing it with more or less the correct harmonies. And let's just watch a video of this. standards that of course that he heard before that he listened to recordings but he had never played before and just instantaneously he would play them okay sometimes not with the exact harmony the way most people play but the harmony always worked and this is what i mean about the importance of listening carefully and being very immersed 
And it was the same thing with Vavo here. I'm at his house right now, actually. Uh, Isaac, he's in his room, and I'm in the guest room. <laughs> but um, we'd be playing tunes, and I'd, I'd ask him, Hey, do you know this one? Do you know that one? It's like, No, I haven't played before. But automatically, just because he had heard this song so many times, he would start playing the melody without really making any mistakes and come up with chords that work, sometimes very, very close to the way it was originally played or the way it's popularly played. Does that work popularly? <laughs> it's generally played. And I saw this Christmas tree. I said, hey man, we should do like a Christmas song for fun. And it's like, which one? And I said, oh, I like White Christmas. Is it, and, you know, it's this like all in the moment. It's not a song that he has prepared in his repertoire, but he just started like... <laughs> You know, just boom, like that. All this is again the, is what I'm talking about. This immersion, immersion, immersion is just so important. You not only have to listen to the music, but you have to listen very, very carefully. And this is something that I learned um, from learning to play the music of Django Reinhardt. Because when I started, there was no one to teach me. And uh, I had kind of had to do it all on my own from recordings and then just paying attention and trying to capture the smallest details. And it's the same thing with languages, like, I, uh, very surprising, here I am in Germany, and I, even though I, I don't speak German, but suddenly I find myself being able to speak German because I've been surrounded by German Sinti for so long, and, and it's crazy how much I understand, and just from spending a few days here already, I speak it better and better, like in the studio with the sound engineer who's speaking in German. So I'm like, maybe you should sit here, I was like, oh, maybe I should sit there instead, I can just like, and they all ask, where did you learn to speak German without a strong accent? I don't know. It's just, I spent so much time in it. I'm someone who thinks a lot. I'm not particularly intelligent or anything. But I'm someone who is very, very, very passionate. And since I have so many German Sinti Gypsy friends, like the only way we can communicate is if I speak their language. It will be the same with their Romanes, the Gypsy language which I learned because I spent so much time with them. And of course, a lot of people like Charlie Limburger, Paula Schaefer, they taught me words here and there. And, and it's, these words stayed in my head, but also I kept hearing these words because I'm always with them. And it's the same thing with music. So I wanna to talk to you about this Harmony course on my Sound Slice page, which is on discount. It's something that I'm very, very proud of. And I just got this message from uh, from someone on Facebook, I just want to share it with you because it really made my day. Yes, so this course, you can find uh, excerpts on YouTube if you just scroll back, check my uh, videos, or just go to Sound Slice and get the first volume for free. But it's something that I've been planning in my head for many years. It's teaching harmony, not from a theoretical approach, but from a very practical and historical approach, which I don't think anyone's really ever done if anyone has well please correct me 
but I go through um, harmony from early jazz, which most people have not done. Because when you go to music school, they teach you harmony from a very academic way, chord scales. And then they start from like the 1940s, 1950s. No, I start from the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s. I explain to you how chord progressions evolved. And when you understand this, it makes learning songs so much easier. Like, I was in the studio with, uh, again, with Hono. We were learning all the Vavao songs. They're very difficult songs. And keep in mind that Hono has no background in uh, theory. I can't tell him, like, 2, 5, 1 to this or that. But I would just do this for him. And he would start to guess where it was going. And sometimes some of them were unpredictable. But man, for a guy who knows no theory, and it's not even a solo, it's a rhythm player, he learned the song so fast. Like, boom, in one rehearsal. And um, yeah, that's just this immersion. And this is basically what I teach in this harmony course. <laughs> good news there are not so many chord progressions to learn and once you understand them it makes learning songs so much so much easier that's basically how I can learn repertoire so quickly it's not because I'm a genius but it's because I understand the language of harmony jazz harmony anyway so man check out my harmony course it's on discount <laughs> but let me just show you a few things like already one important chord progression would be the 1 to the 5 or the 5 to 1 let's say the key of F so F to C7 this is a chord progression you find in so many songs songs like Coquette um, I Can't Give You Anything But Love Sheik of Araby and depending on the melody depending on the song there can be many pathways to get from 1 to 5 one of the most obvious pathways 1 directly to 5 but then you have other progressions like this F, F over A, A flat diminish, and then if you can call this G minor 6 if you want, or C7 with a G bass. You have other pathways, again, depending on the melody. You can have one bar of F, one bar of A flat diminish, and then one bar of C7 over G. Uh, you can have um, F, B flat, this is more modern, A minor 7, 
A flat 7 to G minor 7 to C6. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but I explain all of this in the course. Then talking about the G minor 7, this is what we call a 2 chord. That's where 2, 5, 1 comes from. But actually, 2 and 5 are the same chord, historically speaking, in jazz music. And if you play 2, nowadays when we see 2, 5, 1, we tend to play the 2 as a minor 7 chord. But if we play that as a minor 6 chord, then you see that it's actually a C9 chord. 2 and 5 are the same chord. And the main difference would be in the bass. Instead of having like F, C, now you might have F, G, C. But the, the guitar player or pianist in the early days of jazz might just play F, C9. And the bass player will have more options in terms of playing melodic bass lines. And so I explain all of this in the harmony course. And when you start to study all these small chord progressions, it makes even learning the heart songs much easier. Like all these Bill Evans real harmonizations, like My Foolish Heart. Well, My Foolish Heart originally... Da, da. like uh, one six four five or one six two five but then Bill Evans turns to this da, da. etc etc and it makes a lot of sense what Bill Evans does did if you understand historically where all these chord progressions come from so yeah that's the story i want to share with you i guess i'm promoting my uh, <laughs> sound slice courses and we just released in the style of paul the schaefer on dc music school the first release in in a long time because we haven't been able to record anything in two years um as long as i don't test positive for coronavirus well into january i'll be recording more and more and more great artists i'm really looking forward to this um happy holidays thank you very much Check out my Harmony course. Thank you.